Good afternoon, everybody. So it's time to do a little painting for you guys. Um, this is Monday morning. Actually, I'm not going to be doing any painting today. Actually, I'm not. I'm going to show you what I'm going to be doing. So um, as you jump on, you guys, let me know where you're watching from. I always like to know. Uh, my name is Jay Poe. I'm the owner and artist of the Purple Posy here in West Texas. I am a content creator for Dixie Bell Paint Company, and I am a, a business coach and a mentor um, in my private membership group. So that's all about me. You guys let me know about you, where you're watching from, what projects are you working on, um, if you're painting with me today, all the things. Um, so today, I'm actually going to show you guys how I refinish my drawers um, once, it, once I'm done painting. So I'm going to show you guys how I refinish my drawers. I'm going to show you the insides of the drawers. I'm going to show you what you could do to the outsides of the drawers. Um, if you've got chipped veneer or just a little imperfection. Um, and just, I've got three drawers, so we're going to go through today. The products that I'm using today is Big Mama's Butter in Orange Grove. It's Orange Grove, right? Did I say that right? Yes, Orange Grove. Um, it's got a little bit of the no-pain gel stain in it, I think in Colonial Black, I think is what I put in this one. Um, we got some cacti and succulent transfers that we're going to do. Some of the new Bells and Whistles transfers that are going to be coming out in just a few short weeks. Um, clear coat gloss, some, you know, finishing pad. I have everything here that we're going to be using. And we're going to get started. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I'm actually going to grab a drink. I don't know why I always get hoarse really fast when I'm, when I'm live. It's super weird. I'm going to bring you guys in and I'm going to shoot you guys down so y'all can see what I'm doing. Okay. So this, I went ahead and started, um, before we went live, um, there was a little, like a little imperfection here. So I wanted to cover it up real quick, but so this type of drawer that we're going to talk about right now. So you know how you get the buffets? It's got the doors that open and you got like the three drawers inside. Okay. So you don't necessarily see the sides of the drawer, right? But you can make them pretty when they open up the doors. So this is what I did on my last buffet that I'm actually getting ready to debut tomorrow. It'll have a blog and a YouTube video on the how to's and all of the good stuff. So be watching for that. If you're not on my, my mailing list. Be sure and do that. You'll get notified. Um, but so I, this buffet that I'm about to start has the same thing. It's got the two doors and it's got the, th the three drawers inside of it. So this is a good way to do something really like um, special, like a little surprise when somebody buys it. It's just, oh, that's pretty, right? You can put it on the inside of the doors, the drawers, all the stuff. So that's what I'm doing on this one. I'm not going to do all three drawers, but I'm going to show you all what I did or what I am going to do to cover up some little... Um, Little imperfections in the drawer. Okay, I'm going to shoot you guys down. All right, so can you guys see right here? There's like a little, um, there's like some little funky, and it's not super deep. It's just a little weird thing there. And it's got one on the other side as well, right here. So what I'm going to do, rather than um, filling it with mud and sanding it down and then having to paint the entire thing, I'm going to cover it up with a transfer because why not? It saves time, right? It saves you a little bit of time. So like I said, this is the um, cacti and succulent transfer. This is what, what it looks like and all of everything that you get in there. Oh, that's bright. Everything that you get in there comes with four sheets, all those cool designs, right? Here's the sheets and what you get. Oh, wait, maybe it came with six. It did. It came with six. I've already used them. My bad. It comes with six. Um, so this right here... I actually cut out and cut part of it out from this. This was one big sheet, and I just cut it out so it didn't, you know, overlap in areas. So I was, you know, you can cut these out. You can take what you want out of them, apply them, and, and all that good stuff. So since this is a larger type of area to cover, you know, I could do two little ones, but I thought, no, nah, I don't want to do that. There's these little, these little cactus. Look at how cute little, little cactuses here. And I'm going to apply them here. Or here either way to where they cover up those little imperfections and then they'll, they'll wrap around just a tiny tiny bit but that's okay and so I'm going to show y'all basically how to apply a transfer basically they're so easy to use so they come on this little backing they've got like a little protective backing you just peel it off and cut it out and peel it off and so let me get this on here this is actually now this is not raw wood just just to throw that out there this has some sort of like a I don't know clear coat of something on there. So this is not raw wood, but 
I'm still not going to have any trouble. So I'm going to strategically place this like so. Okay? Sticks on super easy. All of your transfer tubes will come with this little doodaddy, this little wooden stick, to where you can um, burnish your burnish your transfer on. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do that super quick. Um, I will say that on a slick surf surface like this, uh, with the with the poly or whatever is on here, I don't even know what's on here. They're a little bit they're a little bit harder to get off, but they're still really easy to apply. I will say that. So when you're doing it over paint, it's like a breeze. But something like this, I noticed I had to go a little bit, use a little bit more elbow grease to get it on. I think it's just because it's so slick. But it's okay because we're going to seal it down. We're going to seal it down. Now, if you'll notice, I can just take this and flip it over to the side here. I hope I'm not in the way. Am I in the way? Control back. Flip it over to the side and wrap it around here. All right. And then it's got a little tiny bit where it's going to come up on the lip. So I'm going to do the same. Now it'll start to change color a little bit. So you can see, I don't know if you guys can see, how it changes color a little bit right there. That's when you know for sure it's stuck. It's stuck down. It won't always be like that, but it'll let you for sure know that it's stuck down when you see that color change. Now I'm going to take this off gently and watch to make sure nothing is coming up on the, on the clear part here. That was super easy. Oh, I forgot this little section. These little guys. Put that over there. And there. There we got it. So now you can't see the little the little chippy marks, right? So once I'm done with that, just kind of rub it with my finger. Rub it with my finger. And then I'll take like a really soft cloth, like a terry cloth. This is just like an old, this is actually an old like baby washcloth, super soft, and I'll go around it again, and I'll use pretty good pressure to make sure it's down. Alright, and I probably over, over burnish more than you need to, but that's just me. So, you can see there, it wraps around the side quite nicely. There's a little bit on the lip right there. Okay. Let's cover this other one up, and then we'll seal it. I'll show you guys how to seal it. I got a mess. I have a big mess over here. <clears throat> now this one is quite, they're, they're quite spread apart. Okay, you can see right here and right here. So I'm thinking that this one might have to wrap over a little bit more than the other side. Let's see. Take this off. And let's just take a look. So yeah, all right. So we got the uglies covered up because ain't nobody got time to fill and sand and repaint all these drawers. Nobody's got time, right? We're all busy. This is a simple way. Now you can't do this, I mean, I wouldn't recommend doing it on a major chunk that's, I mean, if this whole corner was missing, you know, you should probably fill that and do that, you know, properly, but these are so small, you can't even really tell, but it just bugged me. All right, so I'm just going to fold this over, make sure I get the sides real good. I can see it lifting already, or the paper's turning clear, I mean. There we go. All right, let's see. So easy, so easy. Okay, let's rub with our finger. Make sure it's down, and we'll do this. Guys, how easy is that? I've done lots of transfers where I've had to really, I mean, I was like sweating. 
to get a, just a section off. You know, if you lift it up and then it's still stuck to the paper and you have to put it back down. It, it, it was the other transfers that I'd worked with. I mean, I'd have to really, really, really work hard if it was lifting in a spot to get it to stay down. But that, I mean, these are so easy to use. All right. So with these transfers, you're going to want to seal them in. I'm just going to use, how cute is that? How cute, right? Oh my gosh, so cute. Um, so what I'm going to use for this one is I'm going to use, um, I'm actually going to use clear coat gloss. I've already, st I stirred it real well before I went live. Otherwise, you want to make sure you want to stir it. Don't shake it. Stir it up and get all that gunky stuff off the bottom. So it's in here real good. So since I've already done this right here, I'm just going to do the sides. But really, all you got to do is just, and even if you want to, don't want to do the whole drawer, you could just top coat where the actual transfer is, just as long as you go over a little bit of the side. So this, I can kind of tell where I sealed this one down. So I'm just going to do the entire drawer. And I don't need a whole, whole lot. A little bit goes a long way. You just want to make sure you get a good seal. I did prep this and clean this with white lightning. I did do that. You just want you do want to make sure your surface is nice and clean. Cleaned it and scrubbed it real well with white lightning. And then um, rinsed it really well with vinegar water and I was good to go. If you guys have any questions, y'all feel free to drop them in the comments. Dixie Bell's on. They can answer them for you, or I will come back. And I'll come back, because I always do, and answer any questions that you might have. But that's it. That's all she wrote. So now we have this really pretty drawer. This is the top one. And I'll probably, um, I'm, I'm going to do something on all three of them, but and I'll tie it all in somehow. But that's it. So that's one way that you can do your drawers. I should have cut this out to make it not soak, but I didn't um to make them pretty and like i said cover up any little weird funky things you got there all right that's one the next one i want to show you guys <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> is now i've done this before as well so if you've got um a piece of furniture that you just want to do something extra with i've put you know stencil i've done the silk screen stencil i've done things like that on the sides of the drawer where they just get a little peekaboo of something. Um, now that I have these transfers, I'm all about using the transfers. And this actually goes to that same piece um, that I just did, that drawer. So I'm gonna take this little, this little guy here. This is again from the same um, cacti and succulent transfer. And I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna cut it in half. Okay, just going to cut it in half. And this is just going to be a real cute little, little peekaboo right here. This is raw wood. Okay, this is raw wood. This has not been treated. This is raw wood. And just like the same over there, I cleaned it really well with white lightning. I didn't um, scuff sand it. I didn't do anything like that. I just cleaned it and rinsed it. And now I'm ready to put my transfer on. So we're going to pull this back. And place it where we like it. That looks center-ish. Rub it down. Can you guys see? All right. Where's my little... This is going to go on a lot easier. Not that the other one was hard, but it goes super fast. What was that? Like three seconds? I bet it's done. See? Boom. How easy was that? That was super easy and super fast. So same thing. Get it down real good. How pretty. Pretty, right? This goes with the same, the same uh, piece that we just did. 
so it'll all tie in together. So I'm going to go ahead and seal this up real quick. Same, this is a, I don't know if I said, it's clear coat gloss, and this is a flat, small, flat, small brush. Hey, from South Carolina. And we'll just throw a little clear coat on there. Actually, I'll just go all the way across. I'll just go all the way across. That actually makes the wood look a little bit better. The wood is actually in really good shape on this piece, and we're done. We'll go to the other side and do the same thing. So we're going to take the other half, uh, the other half, and put it on this side. I'm going to have to, the other side's wet, so I'm going to have to do this. Get down here. about center and like I said all of your transfers will come with this little thing Oops. each and every single one of them so if you lose them and you go to open another transfer they'll be there for you oh there's a I didn't notice there's a um, little staple right there Didn't notice that. It didn't get on there good because that little staple. Okay, and then seal it in. Again, if you don't want to seal your entire area that you're working on, just go make sure you get a little bit outside, you know, where the transfer is to make sure it's good and stuck. All right, got it all. So that's another thing that you can do. So when they pull it out, they'll say, oh, look how cute. Look how cute. And I like, I like the easiest thing to do, I like, is to, is to take the same one and cut it in half and put it on both sides. That's just a personal preference, but that's what I like to do. Okay, now this next thing, this other, this other thing that I do for drawers, this is going fast. It's a little bit more, um, you'll need a little bit more elbow grease, but that's okay. Let me spray this. When I'm done with my brushes, I always spray really good with like vinegar water until I can get them in water or to wash them. Quick tip there for you. Okay, so this is one of the drawers, <coughs> excuse me, from the piece I just finished and then I'm gonna debut. Uh, you saw me working on this last week actually with the Dixie Dirt um, and the French linen and the fluff, blending everything in and doing all that stuff. This is one of the drawers. And so I wanted to show you guys how yucky is that? Let me turn this down, there's a glare. You see all the little scratches and funky stuff in there? Let me turn it, can y'all see that? So it doesn't look super pretty. Now it's not gross. There's no mold or anything. It just doesn't look very pretty. So what I do on these, I'll go this way. What I do on these is I have little, what are these, four ounces? Whoops. Little four ounce jars of the Big Mama's Butter that I keep handy. And I put just a, I mean, just a drop of the no pain gel stain in them, mix it up really well with just a little, like, whatever, mix it up real well. There's still some chunks in there, but it's okay. Um, you can use any, you can use any of the no pain gel stains. You can use the white, the gray, the black, the, the walnut, whichever one you want. But this has got a colonial black, I, be, I believe, I'm pretty sure. So I'll mix that up. I take a finishing pad. These are one of the finishing pads that Dixie Bell offers. Uh, they come, they're pretty good size. I mean, they're the size of my hand. And this is something that you can use to, um, when you're done painting, if you've got some brush, br brush strokes that you don't like, you just use one of these bad boys, smooth it out. I'm going to cut it. I'm just going to cut it into a small little piece. 
All right, so now remember, y'all remember how yucky this is. Okay. Now, if you're really worried about getting stain and all kinds of gunk under your nails, put a glove on. I don't really care. My nails always look like not good. Then I'm going to load this up. And I'm going to come in here and just start scrubbing. Now, the inside of this drawer, I also cleaned with white lightning and rinsed with vinegar water. This works really well on, you know, like raw wood. You can, it, you bas you're basically staining it and making it smell good at the same time. That's why you don't want to put too much stain. I mean, just a little tiny bit to get rid of the scratches and the, the weird stuff. There's a little red, um, I don't know what that is. I couldn't get off. So I am just, I'm scrubbing and I'm using a pretty good, using pretty good pressure to scrub in there. This is a really bad area. Oh, I wonder if you guys can see that. This is a really bad corner right here. I'm trying to show you guys. Can y'all see all that yucky white stuff right there? We're going to cover that up. I'm going to show you how good this works. We're going to cover that up. Flip it this way. Right here. You're not even going to be able to see it. And you can use, I mean, there's different things that you can use to fin refinish the insides of your drawers. You could always use hemp oil just to um, condition it if you want it. I like to do it this way because it also gives me the opportunity to make it smell really, really good. Now look, y'all see how that, that yucky white stuff is gone? Turn this down again. See how it's gone? You don't see it anymore. And look how nice that looks. It looks brand new almost. Well, I mean, it pretty much does. It looks brand new. And you can, if you wanted to, you could do the sides. I am going to do, um, so this wood looks a little bit different than up here. And it's got like wood glue or something right there. I'm still going to go over it to condition it, make it smell real good. What this does also at the same time is it makes the um, the drawer really smooth. So if it's got like little tiny, um, you know, like little bumps in there that a terry cloth would like snag on, it makes it pretty smooth to where you won't have that problem. And generally what I'll do is I will do this to my drawers. I'll let them kind of sit for a second. So maybe I'll do like all six drawers. Let them sit for a second. And then I'll come back in and wipe them and give that wood more time to soak in all of the smell good and all of the stain. Pretty cool, right? If you put too much, um, too much of the no pain gel stain in here, it, it's okay. I mean, it's not going to ruin anything, but you're just going to have to make extra double sure you wipe it out really, really good. So there's no stain left over. Look at that. I'm going to mess for when they put, you know, if this was a dresser, when they put clothes or, or what have you in here. And this is going to gather in the corners. And this is one thing I really like about using this instead of like a rag, because I don't have to depend on my finger, which is a very short, fat finger, to get in all the, cover the corners. This will do it for me. And so you don't have that weird, like, white line. Does that make sense? To where you can tell that wood's not conditioned, there's no stain or anything on there. Okay, so that's, I mean, that's, that looks so good, right? I'll turn this down. That looks so good. So, like I said, I'll let this sit, generally. 
but I'm gonna go ahead and wipe it out so you guys so you can see that although it's not looking like black like the colonial black stain you're still gonna be able to see that stain when you wipe this out let me show y'all you see that now this was cleaned really well with um, white lightning and rinse with vinegar water and I didn't have I didn't have anything on my towel when I was done but that's the stain this is why you want to make sure you wipe it out really really good and like I said I normally let it sit to give the wood you know time to soak in all of that stuff but yeah that's why you want to make sure and wipe it down really good and after you wipe it down if you're still getting if you're still getting the stuff just keep just just keep on wiping just keep on wiping because you don't want somebody to stick their you know their silk jammies in there or something and then they've got stain on it one more thing I was going to show you that I do one sec I forgot to grab it So we all pull the drawers out of our furniture and we vacuum them out and we do all the things on the inside, right? Another thing that I'll do, whether the drawer has problems gliding or not, I always take this, uh, it's a paraffin wax bar, just off of Amazon. And I will just take it and rub it here all over the glide. And then I'll do the same on the inside of the piece uh, on the same glide. So when they when they go in, I mean there's they're good and like oiled, I guess you can say. You can use a candlestick. I've used candlesticks before, but this one works really really well. I think it was like two or three bucks. I mean it's it's worth it, and it's I've had this for a long time. So that was it. That was all I was going to show you guys. So this is just these are just you know different ways for you guys to make your drawers look super pretty smell good, um, hide any little imperfections that they might have. Oh, the no pain gel stain is in here. Oh, it's in here. <laughs> I mixed it in a little four ounce container of the orange grove. I've also got Suzanne's garden over there mixed with the, with the walnut, uh, just depending on which one you want to do. But yeah, that's why you just want a little tiny drop. So you still smell the goodness and not the stain because the no pain gel stain is oil based and it does have a it has a, a stain smell to it okay all right if you guys have any questions y'all tag me in the comment please tag me in the comments if you if it's a question for me or otherwise i won't see it um you guys there's a link there for y'all to click on this will take you straight to the butter i believe big mama's butter it comes in Orange Grove, Suzanne's Garden, which is a real, real uh, florally type. It smells so good. And then there is unscented. So you can do this without it smelling. There's an unscented version of it as well. Um, but it will take you to that. Or you can look to see if you have a local retailer um, near you and you can get all these products. If you don't have a retailer, you can order from that link. Um, and it helps my small business out. And I mean, I when I say a little bit, I mean, oh, I don't, I threw it away. I mean, it's less than the amount of like my fingernail polish right there. I mean, it's tiny. All right, I'm gonna hop off of here and I'll see you soon, bye. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video and wanna see more, be sure to subscribe and click that bell icon to get notified when new videos are posted. Also, I typically put out a blog to show how I finish these pieces of furniture. If you head on over to my website, thepurpleposy.com, and sign up for the mailing list, you'll get notified when those blogs are posted as well.